Saturday marks the one-year anniversary of the infamous Donald Trump Access Hollywood tape, yes, that tape, and at least one women's group is not going to let the date go unnoticed. Ultraviolet, a women's advocacy organization, is playing the footage in a continuous loop from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday. The group will be broadcasting in view of the White House on a jumbo television screen, just to make sure the president doesn't miss it. Ultraviolet has lead campaigns against Trump since his time on the 2016 campaign trail, constantly calling him out for misogynistic comments, including the initial release of the Access Hollywood tape, Nita Chaudhry, co-founder of Ultraviolet, told The Rep. Also read Access Hollywood lays off veteran producers exclusive today at the White House, Trump's Access Hollywood video on loop all day, one year after the release. Wegrabic picked out Twitter.com Shufe Assault, Ultraviolet at Ultraviolet October 6, 2017 On October 8, 2016, The Washington Post broke the original story of Donald Trump boasting in 2005 on a hot mic about committing sexual assault. You know I'm automatically attracted to beautiful, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait, Trump told Billy Bush while on the set of Access Hollywood. When you're a star, they let you do it, he added. Also read Jimmy Kimmel calls out Donald Trump as tornado of fake news video The resulting firestorm led to Bush's swift dismissal from the Today Show Donald Trump was elected president of the United States a month later. The Access Hollywood video was a vulgar display of Trump's true colors. It was not so-called locker room talk, it was a man bragging about sexually assaulting women, Shauna Thomas, co-founder of Ultraviolet, said in a press release. The Donald Trump on that tape is the same Donald Trump that sits in the Oval Office every day, aggressively pursuing an anti-woman agenda, including the active dismantling of legal protections for survivors of sexual assault. That is why we are showing the video on loop in D.C., and that is why it is all the more important that we stand up and grab back. In the wake of Trump's response to a violent white supremacist rally, Unite the Right, in Charlottesville, Virginia, the last weekend, several business leaders, council members and media personalities severed ties with the president. Quite a lot actually. Under Armour CEO Kevin Plank, Intel CEO Brian Krasanich Plank and Krasanich both followed Fraser's lead in quitting the council, citing Trump's Charlottesville response. Trump tweeted condemnation of Fraser, who is black but for some reason said nothing about these two. Wiki Commons Alliance for American Manufacturing President Scott Pollerly Tuesday morning, Paul became the fourth CEO to quit the manufacturing jobs group, and yes, he cited Trump's response to Charlottesville as the reason. Twitter Trump makes it worse a Tuesday afternoon, Trump shocked the country with an off-the-rails press conference at Trump Tower in which he appeared to defend and sympathize with the racist mob in Charlottesville. Trump insisted there was blame, as well as many fine people on both sides of the conflict in which Nazi sympathizer murdered one person and injured 19 more with his car, Getty AFL-CIO bails out soon after Trump's rant, American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations President Richard Trumka resigned from the Manufacturing Council. CBS Advisory Councils disband on Wednesday, members of Trump's Strategic and Policy Forum agreed to disband after Trump's response to the violence in Charlottesville. Soon after, the president announced via Twitter that he was ending his executive council's Twitter I voted for Trump. And I sorely regret it that's the title of a New York Times op written by Julius Crane, the founder and editor of pro-Trump website American Affairs. It went viral, though mainly because people were mocking it. American Affairs Trump loses a Murdoch James Murdoch, CEO of 21st Century Fox and more importantly son of media magnate and conservative icon Rupert Murdoch dissed Trump in a widely circulated email to employees. He also said he and his wife will donate $1 million to the Anti-Defamation League over POTUS response to Charlottesville. Getty Images The Arts and Humanities Council This is Trump, then disbands the Arts and Humanities Committee resigned Friday morning en masse with a letter written so that the first letters of every paragraph spelled resist. The members include Cal Penn, Paula Boggs, Chuck Close, Richard Cohen, Fred Goldring and more. Getty Images Ban announced White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon was reportedly fired Friday morning, though he insists he resigned July 27, giving two weeks' notice but his leaving was put off because of the events in Charlottesville. He will return to Breitbart News to go to war for Trump. Getty Images Still more resignations Politico reported Friday afternoon that a wave of resignations hit the Commerce Department's Digital Economy Board. More than half the members of the 15-member board resigned. Wikicommons A billionaire BFF bails on Trump billionaire investor Carl Icahn stepped down Friday afternoon as unofficial special advisor to Trump, though he doesn't pile on.
I sincerely regret that because of your extremely busy schedule, as well as my own, I have not had the opportunity to spend nearly as much time as I'd hoped on regulatory issues, he said in a letter to Trump. Now in the wake of Trump's response to a violent white supremacist rally, Unite the Right, in Charlottesville, Virginia, the last weekend, several business leaders, council members and media personalities severed ties with the president. Quite a lot actually.